right, hey, I've got five amazing foods your brain will love and one it probably isn't going to love. Now, it's true that there's an amazing connection between the food you eat and your brain health. So today I'm going to share five amazing foods your brain will love and one it probably isn't going to love. Many of them you probably already have in your kitchen. All right, first up, blackberries. Believe it or not, blackberries have far more polyphenol content than blueberries. And yes, it's true that blueberries have really nice polyphenols, and studies in America have shown that eating blueberries increases the amount of polyphenol substances in your blood. But for bang for your buck, blackberries have far more polyphenols than blueberries, and they have a much lower sugar content. And as almost all of us now know, sugar is one of the biggest enemies for your brain health. Now, how do polyphenols support brain health? Well, there's, also, there's actually multiple mechanisms, but one of the things that I stress in unlocking a keto code is that polyphenols actually make the mitochondria in your brain healthier and more stimulated and uncoupled. And today we're not going to talk about uncoupling mitochondria, but quite frankly, the more you uncouple the mitochondria and the neurons in your brain, the healthier your neurons will work and the better your brain will be. Now, wait a minute, Dr. Gundry. I thought we weren't supposed to eat fruit. Well, you're not supposed to eat fruit that isn't in season, but when you eat fruit, you want to look for the highest polyphenol content of fruit, and that's blackberries. But please, just like everything else, eat these in season and eat organic blackberries. All right, basil seeds. Now, most people think that chia seeds are for brain health. That's because chia seeds contain a short chain omega-3 fat. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm a big fan of short chain omega-3 fats and I write a lot about them in Unlocking the Keto Code. But here's the deal, your brain does not contain short chain omega-3 fats. Your brain contains long-chain omega-3 fats, primarily DHA, EPA, and DPA. These are all long-chain fats. We lack the enzymes to connect short-chain omega-3 fats and make them long-chain omega-3 fats. We're basically not a fish. So, the idea to eat chia seeds to improve your brain health is quite frankly a misconception. In fact, as I've written about in my books, research shows that eating chia seeds actually increases a marker of inflammation called C-reactive protein. And the last thing you want for brain health is inflammation. In fact, as I write about in Unlocking the Keto Code, neuroinflammation is one of the biggest factors in cognitive decline. So my advice, ditch the chia seeds. Use basil seeds instead, because basil seeds will give you the fiber that you're looking for, but it'll also give you a great kick of polyphenols, which will help your brain unlike chia seeds. Number three, coffee and espresso. So coffee is a great source of polyphenol. Studies have shown that people who drink up to five cups of black coffee a day have dramatically reduced Parkinson's and dementia than people who don't drink that much coffee. Polyphenols in coffee are great for improving brain health through the mechanisms that I talked about previously. Now here's the rub. Unfortunately, 
adding milk or cream to your coffee binds the polyphenols so that they're no longer available to you to use. That's why, interestingly enough, tea also has a number of great polyphenols for your brain. The British use tea, but they put milk in their tea. The Japanese and Chinese drink tea, but they don't put milk in their tea. It's only the Chinese and Japanese who get the benefit of drinking tea. The British lose that benefit because they put milk in their tea. So the next time you're looking for that coffee creamer or the milk and cream to put in your coffee, because you heard Dr. Gundry tell you how great coffee is for you, you just negated that coffee ability to help you because you added that milk product. Sorry about that. Number four, dark chocolate. Now, believe it or not, I eat dark, dark chocolate every day, usually 85% to 90% cacao. Why? First of all, chocolate is loaded with polyphenols. Interestingly enough, studies done by the Mars Corporation, yes, the Mars Candy Bar Corporation, show that cacao-based polyphenols dramatically improve brain function. In fact, there are several supplements available that contain cacao polyphenols that have actually been shown to improve memory. Uh, I take one myself. So chocolate is great for your brain. But remember, more bitter, more better. The more bitter the means the more polyphenols. So look for chocolates that's got at least 72% cacao. Also, look for chocolate that doesn't have any milk added to it. Same reason here. Adding milk to chocolate totally binds the polyphenols in chocolate. So that's why, unfortunately, milk chocolate is useless for it. Also, if you're looking for chocolate, avoid Dutch or alkali chocolate. Dutching was discovered as a way of taking the bitterness out of chocolate. And as you might guess, the Dutch developed this technique and it adds alkali to cacao. So if you see Dutch chocolate or alkali chocolate, throw it away. It has none of the health benefits. Finally, we're getting chocolate products that have stevia, like lilies, allulose, or monk fruit as the sweetener. So you can really dramatically reduce the sugar content in chocolates. And in fact, uh, and I have no relationship with the company, uh, last night I had an 85% piece of lilies dark chocolate as my chocolate of the night. So these things are available. They really help your brain health. Um, number five, eggs. Now, just not just any eggs. What you're looking for is pasture or omega-3 eggs. Many people, including several of my friends in neurology, refer to them as a cognitive multivitamin. Now, this is a very controversial area, and I won't go into all the controversy. But eggs contain lots of vitamin B12, they do contain short-chain omega-3 fatty acids, but not long-chain. Some of the omega-3 eggs do have a healthy dose of DHA. And if you're looking on the label, look for DHA on your omega-3 eggs. They are available. They also contain choline. Choline is an essential compound for your brain. But before we jump on the choline bandwagon, Remember that many of us have gut bacteria that convert choline into a compound called TMAO that I've written extensively about that may actually impair vascular health. Some of us make these bacteria, some of us don't have these bacteria, but so choline is a mixed bag. Just remember that many of us who take choline supplements thinking that we're 
going to improve our brain health, may actually be hurting our brain health. And I un unfortunately measure, them in, measure this in my patients. And we can see the effect in some patients of choline and eggs and supplements actually increasing their TMAO. So if you want to experiment with eggs as a source of choline, uh, ask your doctor to run a TMAO test on you before and after and see what happens. Don't overdo eggs. Be careful because of this factor. And again, make sure they're pasteurized or omega-3. How many eggs? Quite frankly, I rarely eat eggs anymore, particularly in the United States. I eat them in Italy and sometimes in France when I know where the chicken came from. But eggs are not the most beneficial thing if choline is a problem for you. Make sure to check out the next one here. Better known as Roundup. It does not appear on the label because the FDA says it's perfectly safe. Don't believe it for a minute. It's one of your leading health killers that you're eating almost every day.